What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Midwest Outdoors podcast brought to you by Fish Daddy. I'm Jim O'Neill, and welcome back to the studio. We have so much to cover, guys. It's been so fun. There's been so much going on in the outdoors. I've actually had a little time to go enjoy some. It's one of my favorite seasons, the salmon and the trout, you know. It's uh, here in the Great Lakes area, we are blessed. We have the ability to catch a saltwater fish right here. The king salmon have been moving, we've been casting at them, and the warm weather this year has made it hard, and I think this is something that for the last year or two we've been able to talk about with the deer hunting especially, is how those deer seem to be a little behind um, because of how warm it is in the fall. Those summers are starting late and progressing longer into the fall. Well, we've seen that effect a little bit here on the fish now too. So it's been a tough season, but we've been able to land a few big ones. I uh, want to thank everyone for getting me out there this year. Um, it's always tons of fun to catch a fish that fights like that. In my opinion, there's really nothing else in freshwater like it. Of course, muskie are awesome. Big flatheads or sturgeon are their own beasts themselves. But something about the king salmon, the Chinook salmon, it earns the name the king. We're not talking about fishing a whole lot this episode because it's hunting season. Archery season for deer has already kicked off in most of our Midwestern states. Um, some youth hunts start soon. And we're gonna have a couple guests today. We're gonna talk about tradition. We're gonna talk about family in hunting and what it means, you know, how, how people get into it. I wasn't one to be brought up in a household with hunting, so it seems kind of foreign to me. But it's always interesting to see Kids start at such a young age and, and individuals that will hunt until they can't make it out again into their stand. And I want to get embraced with that culture. So we have a few guests coming up to educate me a little bit and tell their hunting story. Real quick for all my fishermen, all right? As always, we got to do a little tournament wrap up, right? So although the pros are done, they are finding things to do in their off season. I just saw that Matt Becker was participating in MLF event over in China. It seemed like a really interesting concept. They kept 10 bass at a time, so it was a two-man tournament. Uh, he fished with a local over there in China, and they were able to keep 10 bass. The second they get 10, they run to the ramp, right? They weigh in their 10 fish, they get an accumulative weight of all 10, then they go right to the water, those fish are released, they have a very high success rate on a live fish release, which is awesome to see. And then they go for another 10, and another 10, and another 10. So throughout the day, and the team of anglers just come in, once they reach 10, they get their weight and they can keep going. Interesting concept, you know, uh, somewhere between your normal five fish limit you weigh in, you know, but also an MLF style where it's almost unlimited. Interesting, it's an interesting uh, concept. Also cool to see the difference in boats, right? Um, some individuals over there had like 300 or 400 racing engines on their bass boats, which were insane. And then they actually offered boats to anglers that didn't have a boat, which was really interesting. You know, I don't know how many they offer or what the qualifications are there, but um, they had little, they had smaller aluminum boats with like 40 or 50 horsepowers on it. Um, so, the pros from America, they didn't have their fast boat, but they still caught fish over there. Also, some of the other pro anglers, uh, I know Jacob Wheeler, uh, Joey Sefuentes, a couple others are over in Italy right now for the World Bass Fishing Championships. Uh, this is just a couple weeks after coming off the Pan American gold that they won. So good luck to Team America. Last year, this time, we were down in my old home, Auburn, Alabama, to visit Logan Parks, uh, a qualifier off the opens. He just became a pro. We were seeing what kind of season he was going to have. Hey, he had an incredible season. But what was even better than his fishing is this event that he's been putting on for high school and college anglers, uh, brought to you by Abu Garcia. And they, they, had a, they had 90 high school and 90 college anglers, I believe, and they pair them up, one each, one high school, one college, so the you know they can learn from each other. The high school angler can have a 
a student angler still as a partner, but that knows boat control a little better, knows, you know, tournament life a little more. It seemed like an incredible event. And what made this year even cooler, obviously there was a little more money for the students to win, which was awesome. You know, a team won 25 grand first place. But Emery Carver, shout out to him, because he won Logan Park's boat that he used this year in the open, or in the Elite Series, rather. And not only did he win the boat, but they loaded that thing. It was full of rods, baits, and everything. Um, in fact, Logan showed that boat off on a very impressive video online, you know. And Logan, if uh, the fishing ever goes to heck, um, I think you're ready for your adult modeling career. You looked really good there, the mustache and everything. Um, but no, man, huge congrats to uh, not only the 17-year-old high school student that won a brand new fully loaded and packed with gear boat, but also to Logan and everyone involved that make that event happen and give it out to the kids. Um, that was really awesome. So that's it for the tournaments. That's it for fishing on this episode. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but we're going to be right back and we're going to dive into why hunting is important and why it should be introduced to your family if it hasn't been. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at mwomag.com. That's mwomag.com. Well, it may have taken a little bit for us to get back together, but here I am joined by Autumn and Don Pratt. Um, to some, you might know them as the lady record holders of Michigan bear hunting. In fact, you are looking at a mother and a daughter that over, I'd guess, 20 some years apart, set bear records for the state of Michigan. And um, yeah, it's awesome to have you ladies today. How are we doing? Thank you. Good. Autumn, Autumn uh, was pretty talkative the last time I met her. Uh, she's a little quieter today because she got mauled by a bear. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, just a little battle wound. Just a little battle wound. But Autumn, you are the star of the show today because you were the one that broke the record. Now, it didn't just happen, right? It happened a little bit ago. It happened last year in September. Last year in September. Yep. Yep. And um, but it takes a while for things to get processed and go through every check and balance. And um, but slowly but surely, you've been recognized through, you know, your local government and different organizations. And uh, now now look at this. How's life as a bear shooting celebrity? Kind of busy. I keep getting emails. Hey, can I put your story here? Can I have you on this little interview? And it's like, whoo, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. Imagine doing it every day. It gets a little exhausting. <laughs> no, but it's fun. It's fun. So let's t tell people about it a little bit. What's uh, Walk us through the day and uh, tell us what you got. I know it's, I'm not, it's not really in the picture, but I see the plaque. It's above our head right now. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about that. We went out. We sat in our stand at about three and like probably about five or so we had a mom and two cubs come in and they were really unsettled and really nervous. And my dad tried to get a picture and he's in a tree stand behind me so he can watch everything. And he tried to get a picture and they saw his phone move and they absolutely just ran off. And so they took off and I'm like, okay, I hope my dad doesn't go try to take a picture of the big bear if he shows and screw that up too. Then about an hour later, one of our, tar my target bear came in, what, the bear I was originally going for. Um, he came in and he was really, really spooked. And I was sitting, so I stood up the second that 
he turned and he couldn't see me. So I was ready in case he gave me a shot. But then he walked back out and I'm you in the video my dad took of me. You can see me going. Because he's videoing the back of my head because he's like videoing my shot. And you can see me say no, no, like come back. And not even like 10 seconds later, the bear walks back in and just goes straight to the logs. And he like almost immediately he turned broadside and I was able to get a really good shot. What'd you what'd you take your bear with? A bow. A bow. Yeah. In fact, um, you know, I get told sometimes that, oh, I'm worried my kid can't pull back strong enough to shoot a, you know, to shoot a deer, let alone a bear, um, a, you know, a larger animal. Um, at what age, just, you know, just so other people kind of know, at what age were you strong enough to pull back on a bow? And what, what uh, if you have some of your details about what uh, pound you're pulling back or what kind of bow you use, anything like that, that'd be great. Yeah. So I started with like a itty bitty recurve when I was like younger, probably like eight years old, just messing around in the backyard. Yeah. And then I stopped doing that for a while because I got my crossbow and I was like, oh, this thing's great. I don't have to pull back and straighten my arm. And not until about, what was it? 2021 or something. Yeah. 2021. I went to a bow store and got, <laughs> I got a bear legit and it's an undertow camo which is blue and I love it <laughs> and I got my bow and freshman year of high school I started to shoot in my school's archery league yep. and uh, it got a lot of pointers there my archery coach actually is like a really decorated archer and he gave me some great points and then along with my dad's help he gave me a lot of good points and then I had been doing that just like recreationally for about a year. Then the next year came and my mom's like, oh, I have opportunity to put in and transfer a tag to you because it's the last year of me being technically like a mentor hunter. Sure. So what we were working on, um, especially in school, was um, Autumn needed to be able to draw back enough poundage to you know what do what we feel was enough to lethally kill an animal before we were going to let her hunt with that bow so she did a lot of practice at, in the school because of that and was able to continue to move the poundage up to i originally started at like 20 pounds which is the lowest my bow could go mm -hmm. so i started there and i was even like oh no 20 pounds i can't pull back that, that much like and then slowly we started adding more and my dad would turn it up when I wasn't looking. And I'm like, man, hmm, I swear this wasn't like this two minutes ago. And slowly I got up to like 30 pounds. And then at 35 is what I shot my bear with. And right now I'm up to 37, which is not too much of an increase, but it's something. It, it's good you say that though, because like even last week I was just told by someone that, um, you know, I shouldn't post a video that uh, someone shot a deer at 40 at 47 pounds, you know, and I said, it's you don't need you don't need 55, 60, 65 pounds, you know, especially if it's a closer shot, you know, and depending on how good of a kill shot you take, obviously, there's going to be certain places where especially on a deer, I don't know as much about bear hunting, but you know, that you want to go through the shoulder blade or through a rib, you know, you're going to need a little more to go through. But if you hit soft tissue, you don't need right. as much, especially if you're shooting down and having that gravity come down with that arrow. Oh, for sure. I mean, look at Fred Bear with his recurves, you know, right close up. It just depends on all the proximity of the animal and where you, where you land the, the broadhead. All right. So mom, we'll switch it over to you, Miss Dawn. Um, you, We've talked a little bit in the past that, uh, you know, you had tons of hunting experiences, but they didn't start at the beginning. They didn't start right away. And you were upset that the brothers, your brothers got to go and you didn't as a child. Yeah. yeah. So my brothers would go um, on this nice trip with my dad every fall in, in November. And I would stay home with my mom and the phone would ring. They'd call and I'd get on the extension, if you know what an extension is, um, from years ago. and they would be telling my mom what a wonderful time they were having and how many deer they were seeing. It was so much fun. And all I could think of is, okay, where are they and how come I'm here and they're there? 
So I kind of complained about it to my parents. And my dad decided to uh, bring his hunting uh, extravaganza uh, back. For, he was going to Macasta and he decided to go back to Grayling where um, my grandmother lived. And um, he, he said, we'll go up there and you can go. And so that's when I started, not nearly as young as Autumn started, because I got her out hunting when she was six. Yeah. And that's shot her first um, deer, uh, six point with her crossbow. Again, because she couldn't draw back enough weight yeah. to use the regular bow. But um, and so that's how I got started hunting. And lo and behold, a few years later, you also cemented yourself in history. And at that point in time, shot the record black bear in Michigan, correct? I did. Um, uh, I ended up uh, taking some other record book animals as well. And um, that was after, you know, I met my uh, Autumn's dad and we hunted together. And so he says, you know, do you want to go bear hunting? I have never done it before in my life. And so I learned a lot because we, um, scouted for the bear ourselves. I learned what sign looked like, which I probably seen many times before, but never recognized it. Um, learned how to set, you know, set a bait, um, and look for trees that you could get into. And so it was, a uh, very interesting learning experience about how nature works and where bear actually live in the woods, which is, you know, something that um, you need to learn if you want to be successful, because it, they're not just, you know, 100 yards off the side of the trail. Before we go back to Autumn, you know, I want to ask because we have we have a outdoor industry that is slowly starting to catch up in the female department, but has so long been dominated by male, male advertising, you know, um, suggestions that it's for males or boys. Um, how important and what does it mean to you to not only have done it your whole life, but to raise a daughter in the outdoors and around hunting? Well, I think it's important. Um, you know, to me, it was important to be outside because I, you know, as a kid, when I grew up, we didn't have all these electronics. And so, Outside was where it was at. If you were out there, you were having fun. If you had to be called inside, you weren't. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't even have access to the TV because that was my dad had the TV and you only got it when he walked away. But, um, you know, you get a appreciation for nature and appreciation for the animal, too, when you hunt it. And, um, you know, I was I was born and raised going fishing on on trips and canning the meat and and the same thing with the venison freezing it and cutting it up and that was our um you know our sustenance we you know so i just feel like when i had my daughter i'm like well she's got to learn how to go out in the woods and and you know almost like survival yeah. um tactics but you know just to be out in nature and, and to be getting fresh air and exercise and harvest your own animal and be able to, you know, I pull venison out of my freezer and I don't have to watch for a recall. I like that. I like that I have um, fresh meat um, and and the same thing for her. And, and you know, and there's you, you have to learn. It's it's a, you know, a skill set that you have to learn, too. It's not just go out there and you're going to lay down three deer and throw them in your freezer and be done with it. Um, I teach, mm. you know, teach her how to go out and, and hunt. And then, well, with the exception of the bear, we did not do the bear, but for the deer, um, we actually cut our own meat up too. So it, it's all a learning experience. There's something that's good, I think, for humanistic um, abilities, you know, getting back to our roots and. Absolutely. You know, we're supposed to be collecting berries and and hunting meat and and catching fish. You know, instead we rely on drive-throughs. You know, I mean, it's it. We look at how many issues are going on with the country, with the world, and it seems like half of them, especially the biggest thing, our health, mental and physical, um, can kind of start with just what we put in our body, and um, you know, doing something that's not only clean, uh, possibly organic. Um, but the biggest thing is sustainable too, you know, um, now more than ever, we've got so many dang deer. Um, you're not hurting, you're not hurting anything, taking a few of those. And even the bear, the bear, yeah. we're not hurting. We're not taking away an endangered or, you know, a resource that's barely there. It's all a part of the ecosystem. I feel is getting out in the woods and harvesting food, just like they did, 
you know, so many years ago. That's how they sustained. They lived off the the earth, and that's that's kind of what we're doing. And I'm telling you, when you're out in nature too, uh, it's so nice to take kids out there because um, you get a real appreciation if you're out in the woods all day and you come in and you can, I mean, you do run the water, right? And you say, wow, this is nice because you don't have that. But, you know, you you get a balance. There, it's a nice balance. And then you really can appreciate the things that you have too if you have to learn how to harvest your own animals and and kind of learn the, the way of the land. When you took the bear, did you have any notion that it was possible to beat your mom's record? I didn't think so because when you're up in the tree, everything is obviously, you look like you're looking down on like a little aquarium, which is the woods. Mm -hmm. And everything looked small to me. So I'm like, oh my gosh, is the bear going to be big enough? But obviously I was just like, oh my gosh, I shot a bear. Like, wow, that's crazy. Um, I wasn't even thinking of the record until she saw the bear. She's like, oh my gosh, his head's really big. It might have a chance. And my dad started talking about it. And I'm like, wait, what? So yeah, <laughs> it was a little, I didn't even think of it at first, honestly. Yeah. But about the bear in general. No, I, th I think that's good. You know, I, I mean, I am a trophy hunter when it comes to fishing, hunting, you know, mm -hmm. I, um, uh, I really look for that one, you know, like I'm not out there harvesting all the time and no, nothing against people that are, you know, it's just kind of how I choose to spend my time. So it's cool that you got a surprise kind of like that, you know, you just were going out to do what you did. And then the fact that two women in the same family, mom and daughter, you know, both have those records. Um, I think it's pretty crazy. And what we were just talking about before this call, I learned that um, mom's bear was a little heavier, even a little taller, a little older but it goes off the cranium size, huh? Yes. The so skull size. The the length plus the width is what they use to measure. Of the top of the skull. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My out was like really, really, really long. And that's definitely what gave me the okay. inches on the. So it's the front. So when the bear is sitting, it's the mm -hmm. front, the, the skull, I'm sorry. It's the front to the back. Yep. And then the widest measurement from side to side. Sure, sure, yeah. And how has how has your classmates um, taken your hunting um, extra extravaganzas? Um, I get mixed information. Like, oh, okay, you hunt, and some are like, oh, that's I don't really care for that, and I really don't bring it up too much unless I know like my friends are like supportive, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. If I know somebody isn't, doesn't like that, I don't bring bring it up. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. But obviously, there's always mixed opinions. But majority of the people are like, that is very cool. Even my principal, he is a big hunter. And he loves hearing about my stories. And I actually just brought him my bear magazine from Woods and Waters. And he read my whole article today. But I also think, too, uh, sometimes she'll tell me that, you know, kids are kind of on the fence about when she talks about hunting. And she does, I think, I do think you try and educate them about the hunting and how nice it is to be out in, in the wilderness and and how wonderful it is to harvest your own meat and and, and how tasty the venison is and the bear. I think, I think a lot of, um, I think a lot of times people look down on something, even outside the outdoor industry i think it comes to ignorance you know I, they just don't know enough you know where that's our part in the outdoor industry whether you work for a company like me or you just are um an advocate like yourselves you know um we just have to teach because the more people know the more they'll have the right at least the right information to base their um their judgments off of because it could be a blind you know judgment just from false information oh absolutely yeah. Well, no, that's good. And hopefully, whether it is boys or also hopefully girls, they'll see what you're doing, Autumn. And it will even your close friends might provoke them to come out with you and they never would have done it otherwise. She does have some friends that as when she was in elementary school that were, you know, some of her girlfriends were thinking of going with their dad, but they were on the fence. And so, you know, she talked with them and said, hey, you know, sometimes you go out there and you look, you sit and you don't see anything. And sometimes you do, but you always see something interesting out there 
when you're sitting and looking in the woods and watching the woods come either come alive in the morning or the woods kind of, you know, go to bed at night. And, um, and so she has, she has gotten some of her girlfriends to say, Hey, yeah, I did go hunting with my dad. And I thought it was really neat to just get away from the busyness of the day-to-day life and sit out there and just watch nature and just watch, you know, how everything is just so calm and, 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 you know, de-stress yourself basically. Last week I had a buddy said, Jim, I love watching all your videos because it seems so nice to get out there. I said, guess what? You could just go out there. Oh yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, Hey, the good news is, um, for your dad, Autumn, uh, you know, I think the first, uh, girlfriend I had, uh, I showed up to the house and the dad was, uh, cleaning his gun, uh, to make, you know, a goofy false threat to me as an eighth grader. Um, I don't think your dad has to worry about that. Cause you might put a crossbow in a face of a guy that treats you wrong. So, you know, stay strong with that. And, uh, no, on a serious note, just keep doing what you're doing. Congratulations on your shot. Mom, sorry to see your record fall, but I don't think you're too upset about it. I'm not. I mean, if somebody has to take your record away, why not? Why not your daughter? They'll keep living on. on, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, ladies, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And um, we'll see you next year in the woods. All right. Okay. Sounds thank good. You. Thank you. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at mwomag.com. That's mwomag.com. Thanks for that, Autumn and Dawn. We loved having you on today. It's so cool to see a mother-daughter duo breaking records like that 20-some years apart. Um, I don't think many people can say something like that, that their mother and then themselves owned a record, you know? So that's really cool, and I was glad to talk to them, and I was happy to see the smile and joy that truly comes out of Autumn. You know, you don't you don't hear of young ladies getting that into the hunting scene that hard, but it seems to be more and more common now. And why shouldn't it be? There's there's no rules on age or sex when it comes to hunting or fishing. Everyone should enjoy it, and if you can do it with your loved ones, it's that much better. Speaking of loved ones, we're going to jump into another interview real quick where we really talk about what it means hunting, family, tradition. All right, welcome back from commercial, everyone. As you see in front of you, we have a whole family, all right? And that's what I said. We're talking family tradition. We're talking hunting within the family and how that bonds us together. And without further ado, we are bringing on the Perry family um, because I saw a clip this week that just completely enables and makes you think, hey, this is why if I'm a parent, this is why I am getting my kids into hunting. And uh, we're not going to show that. So let's walk through that a little bit. Who were our main guests of that one? That would be uh, me and Colton. Uh, actually, was on the hunt, which is this one here. Uh, it was a really neat little hunt. You know, we just, I had a deer that I was hunting. Uh, and I had actually missed him the week prior to this hunt. And so we just kind of went in there and had a little fun that evening. And uh, Dylan was behind the camera. And so we actually all three had deer that we were, or me and Dylan had bucks that we were chasing. And Colton, he didn't care what he, whatever came out, he was going to shoot it. And uh, it worked out that my buck ended up coming out 
and uh, I shot it, and then the dove came up, and Colton got to shoot it. So, and Dylan caught it all on camera, and uh, just a fun little hunt. Just you know, all three of us sitting there together, just had a really great evening. So now here's the question: Has anyone in this video right now have yet to get a deer? Not maybe not this year, but all time. Has everyone taken one? Yes, yeah. sir. All right, so I'm the lone one out still. That's, <laughs> that's that's all right. That's all right. Um, Colton, we'll 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 throw it to you real quick. So your first your first deer. Um, explain the feeling. Explain what what went through you at that moment. What you're thinking. Well, um, I've always deer hunted with deer hunting with mom and dad. It's always just been a family deal. I always just got to go outside, spend time. I've always hooked up with my papa. And when I was eight, dad took me hunting for my first time, and I got to shoot, and I killed my first deer. And I, dad and all my family were talking about bow hunting all my life, and I wanted to try bow hunting. So dad got my bow, and I shot, and shot, and I shot, and I shot all the time. And I finally got good enough for dad to become comfortable. Uh, let me shoot a deer. So he took me hunting, and uh, when I first shot that deer, I was, I didn't, uh, the way I shot it, we couldn't tell really what happened until just a little bit later we got hung up and had to watch the footage. So my emotion went from really high to really low to what's going to happen. When I found out I shot that deer, I was so excited, and the feeling that uh, all that work of shooting and uh, my form and just get everything right paid off, it was just been awesome. Now, something I noticed, you know, watching that video is obviously, um, you know, it's you're not uh, I saw some comments, right, that it's a, a little uh, lower pressured bow, right? Your, your draw strength on it's a little lighter. Right. And um, I never seen a lighter um, a lighter shot like that, that high up in a stand. And you can kind of see there's like that moment where you're like, oh, what's that arrow going to do? You know, it's kind of wobbling out there. And then the fact that the deer's already moving and you're like, dang, I think it's over. But then it connects. It was like, I was like, wait, how'd that all time up perfectly together? But, um, but yeah, that's gotta be exciting, you know? And, and that's why you got to shoot all the time, right? Because whether you're up five feet ground level in a blind up in a stand, I mean, those shots are all different and you got to know kind of how, what, how you got to prepare for that and how you got to set up. Yeah. You know, I'm very strict on, our, on our family, and it doesn't matter if it's me or Becky or one of the kids, if we're not shooting well, we don't get to be behind the boat. We're, we're going to film, you know, or we're going to do something until we're shooting good. We want to be ethical. We want to be as ethical as we can, and with bow hunting, there's so many things that can go wrong, even if you're hitting perfectly. You know, if you're Levi Morgan and shooting, you know, winning world championships, there's still things that can go wrong that's out of your control. And so, uh, you know, I'm pretty strict on on us shooting the, to the best of our ability uh, before we go out in the woods. And Colton sure put in the time for that hunt. So what do you think, Colton? Since Dad missed that buck before and injured him, should he have to go outside in the back and do some more shooting? <laughs> I don't know. He <laughs> definitely did. After he missed that buck, he definitely had a lot of uh, frustrating evenings out there trying to make sure his sight was on, trying to figure out what went wrong. But Yeah, what they don't show in that video, though, is they edited it out. He attempts to throw his bow out the window because he was so mad <laughs> that he missed. Um But, yeah, Dylan's right. He just kept shooting, shooting, shooting to get dialed back in. Well, at least for hunting, right? I, I'll say you have a slight advantage over the fishermen. Um, when we lose a fish, especially if we see it, right? I mean, odds are that's the last time we'll ever see it again. You know, it's it breaks the line, it throws the hook, and you just you just sit there, and there's nothing you can do. You have to. The, the more time you put into the sport, and the more you respect it and respect the animal, there's no reason to pout. There's no reason to. Uh, you know, there's no reason to get all heard about because at the end of the day, that they're, that's their goal, right? Our goal is to go harvest them, catch them, land them. Their goal is to not, <laughs> not get harvested or caught, you know? And, um, but hey, at least you guys have, uh, at least you have cameras. At least you have the, the knowledge that that deer is going to stay relatively in the area, you know? And you can see it with your eyes. You don't have a lake hiding that water, hiding what's living under it. Right. Obviously, it's deer season, right? Um, 
how how early into the year you talk about how much you practice and how how serious it is um are we shooting year round when do you start gearing up for it when do you start uh you know going out and looking at where you're going to set up your stand or your blinds you know as far as shooting there's a few months out of the year that we don't shoot uh but we typically start somewhere around june uh you know getting ready for season sometimes a little earlier uh, sometimes a little bit later but and typically we'll shoot you know obviously all through january our season closes january 15th and so we, we try to shoot a little bit, you know, even once we start hunting, you know, continue to shoot our bow, make sure everything stays on. But usually after January 15th, we're kind of, we're kind of done for, for that for now, you know, so we kind of lay it down and take off a couple months from shooting. Uh, and as far as preparation for hunting, you know, food plots and stuff, it seems like that never ends. You know, we're, of course, usually right after deer season, uh, you know, when we're trying to shed hunt, and then turkey season is on us, and so we start turkey hunting. Uh, and in the back of our minds, as we're turkey hunting, we're always scouting, you know, and looking for those sheds and looking for new spots or new sign. Uh, so it it really never stops, you know. Yeah. yeah, I think that was my introduction to uh hunting, and it's not it's not hunting per se, but was shed hunting, right? Um, and there's something so cool about that. Um, I felt like it was just a natural thing to do because I love foraging in the spring. I love going out and looking for different fungi and such. And, uh, the first, the first couple of years I went out and did that, my friends were finding antlers here and there, you know, and you say, okay, this is a good time to look. And, uh, here we are six years later, no bucks on the ground, not even a shed found. So maybe I should stick to fishing. Maybe hunting is just not my thing. Um, but I just got into spear fishing, and let me tell you, that's the perfect hybrid of fishing and hunting. It is sweet. Um, yeah. So my next question, though, is when everyone's hunting, you're saying turkey, you know, uh, maybe you do a little, I don't know if you guys do a little waterfowl or anything like that. Um, but you do turkey, you do deer, and you got a lot of it. You got a lot of hunters in this room. So are are we eating a lot? Are we providing? Are we stocking that fridge and freezer up? A hundred percent of what we kill. Yeah. So uh, Dylan and the boys, they're into duck hunting. They they really enjoy that. Cody's a pretty avid fisherman himself. Um, a lot of times we have to <laughs> kind of draw stalls on who's going to actually get to hunt that evening or who's going to be filming. So, but yes, we do. We we eat. If we kill it, we eat it. And what are uh, what's your what's your go to recipe, Mom? What what are the boys all like at home? Um, either deer chili or deer fajitas. Deer they fajitas. all love fried fish. I mean, it, hand down, that's probably one of the favorites. Fried fish. Um, chicken. Yeah, they like deer steak, like chicken fried deer steaks. Yeah, that sounds good. You guys get up north, up by us, by the Great Lakes. You should you should taste how good the fried fish is out of our water up here. It's I'm not going to say it's a big difference, but there's a little difference there, and it's it's incredible. Um, but no, that's great. Well, let's go to let's go outside the family for a second because we got a we got a married couple here. Um, did you also grow up in a hunting family, or is this a new culture? Brothers hunted a lot. Us girls didn't really ever hunt, but I started hunting a lot when I married Dylan. And how do you? What is your opinion on how that interacts with your relationship and how it can bring you guys closer together? Um, we spend the majority of our time hunting. Uh, sometimes I can get impatient with him and he can get impatient with me, but it's still a blast. We love it. Now you actually killed your first deer. Yeah, I killed my first deer on their land when we was, I don't know if he was engaged yet. I think we had just gotten engaged and he took me out and I shot my first deer, which happened to be a buck and I was super proud of it. Yeah, it was a good experience. It was really exciting. It was yeah, fun it was. for all of us to get to experience that with her. And I would say as far as right now, no kids, it doesn't put too much stress on the relationship because as far as we're trying to film everything. So I have just a, a camera girl right here and then when she's hunting, she has a camera guy. So right now it's actually going pretty smoothly, but uh, that, it does bring us closer together. Got to get to spend a lot of time outdoors and just with each other in the blind or in the stand. But I even got her into saddle hunting this year, which she wasn't too sure about at first, but now she's starting to kind of come around to it. Awesome new experiences for both of us. 
And I think, you know, I've got a little brother, I've got a little sister, and we all we all get along independently, but we have such different passions, you know. Um, my brother was the athlete, my sister was the dancer, um, and I was the outdoor guy, right? So it's very different. Um, we'll we'll go to we'll go to the brother that hasn't got to speak yet. Um, what does it mean to you to obviously you guys have some age difference, you know, between you guys? Um, but you all have this passion that you can relate to and do together. So what does that mean to be able to spend that time with your brothers out there and your sister that's missing? I know we're missing a sister. I didn't mention that. We are missing a sister. Oh, it's absolutely great. Because a lot of times if, if I'm not hunting, I'm filming him. And if he's not hunting, he's filming me. I mean, it's just, we, we take turns and we just enjoy the whole thing. And we're there for the ups and downs. And, there when we score. So, I'm and I would say thus far this year, they haven't fought over who's getting to hunt and who's filming. So it's going pretty good this season. I will add to that kind of like what you were saying, Cody, I would say it probably took him the longest to really get interested in the, especially the hunting side of it. Like when I was, you know, five, I think I killed my first turkeys when I was, when I was five and then my first year when I was six. When he was that age, he was all about fishing, uh, catching bullfrogs, catching insects. Like, he was all about that kind of stuff. And we were, you know, we would encourage him, you know, if you want to go hunting, you can. If you want to come with us, you can. And he kind of, you know, didn't show too much interest. And we didn't want to force it. And it just kind of slowly happened. He just seen everybody else having a good time. And really, I'd say the past few years, he's really gotten into it. And now it's just, we're all in a mess here. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So there was actually a hunt that Cody and Colton and I were on, um, and they both killed. Was it your first doe? Yes. And he killed a doe at the same time from the same stand. So that was a fun hunt too. I think we need soon a ladies only edition. We got three <laughs> ladies, two can hunt and one can film. You know, it sounds like we always do this in threes. So I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying ideas here. <laughs> We're going to put that on the little bucks. <laughs> <laughs> is, how about this? Now, you, I, you said you haven't fought about anything yet. Is there, is there a deer on that property that y'all, <laughs> they're already looking. There has to be. There's got to be one. A bad story uh, a few years ago, Aaron and Dylan were hunting in Kansas. We had all drawn tags in Kansas. And they were hunting a big buck that we called Whistler. And they had all day sits in the snow. I mean, traveling back and forth, trying to work it in. And it was really rough. I mean, they were tired, long days, long sits. And then it, I had drawn a muzzleloader tag. So he came and he's like, hey, we're leaving. I don't remember what day it was. It was like a Wednesday. And I said, no, I, I can't go that day. He's like, what do you mean you can't go? I said, I just can't go that day. So then I like, actually, she said, I'm just not feeling it's just, it's just not like the right time. I told him. It wasn't the day. It wasn't going to happen that day. <laughs> and I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> so a couple of days later, I was like, okay, let's go. And he's like, what? I'm like, I'm ready. Let's do it. So we drove up, scouted that evening, and I killed the big buck that he had been on the very next day. <laughs> like, and she didn't even try. It was just like, <laughs> we was walking in, and I was testing the wind, and it really, the wind wasn't right. But we were kind of committed, and so I was like, you know what? We've just got a couple of days. We're just going hunting, and I'll be if he didn't show up, and she kills him. And he's filming, and so after I kill him, I'm so excited. You know, this adrenaline, that's the biggest buck I've ever killed, and I go up on him, and then just naturally, I turn around, and I'm like, are you mad? Are you mad? And he's like, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think that's a little natural, but you know, at the end of the day, at least for me, I, I, I really believe this, like I've caught, I've caught a lot of fish, you know, and getting into hunting, I think that will bring a, a fun new feeling, you know, the spear fishing for sure. It's like your kid all over again, you know, doing something new again, relearning, everything's a record, you know, that you do. Cause it's, you're doing it for the first time. Um, and when you see the look on someone's face, someone that you love, whether it's a family member, a friend, when you see that look in their face that they did something special, and especially when they know it means a lot to you too, uh, and they kind of want you like your approval kind of thing, you know, 
Um, there's something as magical, if not better at this point in my life with that, you know, uh, I, I genuinely mean that, you know, I, I brought out a buddy last week, salmon fishing and all, all I didn't care at all if I caught a fish and I just wanted him to catch one because he never did it before. Of course I caught it, you know, but <laughs> it's like, it's like, I wish he did. I I mean that lie detector me and everything. I, I really wish he, he caught it instead of me, you know? And I think it's that's. So like when you get to watch them grow and fall in love with hunting in the outdoors, Aaron is the best about, we just came back from a, like a family hunt trip this past weekend. He didn't even hunt. Yeah. He was like, Oh, Becky, I want you to hunt this weekend. And you know, we're all hunting and filming. And I mean, he took his bow, but he didn't even hunt. He just, he, he's like you, he enjoys watching us love it too. Now the not so enjoyable part, who is the <laughs> editor? <laughs> <That's still laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was gonna say who all edits, but it's almost always just like that one person that has to do it. You know, you unfortunately are gifted to not suck with technology, therefore you have to do it, and it is, it's such a tedious process. Um, God bless these guys on the other side of the camera um, because they make my job a lot easier. But um, I know not everyone has that. Um, and when I plinker around and try to edit, you know, that's you're wasting. I mean, the amount of time that you'd rather be out fishing, hunting that you're editing. But there's something so amazing also when it all comes together and gets finished and you get to put it out there. Even if it's only like for 10 views, like once in a while, like that happens and you're just like, I don't know. I don't know if it was worth it, but it it was, you know, even if it wasn't actually, it was mentally, you know. Well, the way it all started is we have been even just like handy camp filming for 24 years. Like when we first got married and started hunting and it all came about because he just wanted to preserve the memories. He's like, years from now, I want to be able to watch these with my kids and grandkids and just watching them grow up. We're just fortunate that Dylan's really good at editing. I don't know what we would do. <laughs> we would just have handy cam videos, I guess. You know, she's right. We started filming. We really just do it for us. Uh, or, you know, that's the way I feel about it. We film because I love rewatching it. You know, just the the, the uh, clips that he's put up on YouTube. I can't tell you how many times I've watched them <laughs> over and over, you know, and they're just... It's kind of weird, but I just love watching the kids and watching us and reliving those memories. And then, uh, you know, Dylan can turn it into something that uh, I don't know how he does what he does. I, he's, he don't get enough recognition. I know that. <laughs> it, like with Colton on this particular video, killing his first deer with a bow. I mean, it's you just can't describe it. Like, and being able to capture that, and, you know, have it for years and years and years to come. That's, that's one reason we do it. Thank you guys for coming out. Um, now, we've talked about it, I, but I don't think we've given it justice yet. If someone wants to check out um, all your guys' family adventures and the production you're doing, where should they check it out? Yeah, so our main, where we're trying to put all of our uh, our main long-form content is on YouTube. Uh, we just kind of got that fired up. We've been filming for years and years, and um, trying to we did it a couple other things a few years ago but we really are trying to fire up our youtube um so there'll be like recent hunts and then as you've seen like a couple of the older hunts obviously colton's a little bit older than he was in that video yeah that took me that took me off a little bit i was like <laughs> voice his voice was a little higher pitch and he looked a little <laughs> shorter he looked a little shorter there so yeah so the, on youtube it's hunter's legacy um just because I mean, behind that name i thought we kind of just mentioned real quick is because that's exactly what it is it's our legacy that we're leaving. You know, i grew up ever since i can remember but even before i could pull back a bow or even scope a rifle i was hunting with my dad in his tree stand literally i would sit on the, the platform and he would sit on where he i would sit where he puts his feet and i'd just be in between his feet up there just hunting with dad that's all i can remember there's not a time i don't remember spending time in the outdoors and then his dad, you know, took them hunting, and it's um, crazy how it's evolved, you know. What his dad knew, the knowledge he had about hunting was a lot smaller than what my dad has, and then now it's going on, and you have so much more resources such as YouTube and social media to gain all the knowledge you possibly can, and that's that's kind of what we're trying to help people do is get people into the sport and um, get them introduced to hunting. But yes, Hunter's Legacy on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram is just Hunter's Legacy. Just look us up there and you should be able to find us. 
because it's it's cool to play Madden in the same you know party as three or four people, but it's way cooler to get out in a deer stand with a couple people and go do that. Dad, before we leave, uh, one thing one thing for the viewers at home, if a dad's watching right now, one reason why they should take their son or daughter hunting this year. I think the biggest reason is is because you get to spend that quality one on one time. Um, with each individual child. You know, there are times that we hunt two or three of us together, but most of the time it's just two of us. And so usually we have a cameraman and, you know, a shooter. But, uh, you know, Cody and I, we've been hunting a particular deer pretty hard the last week. And I've got to spend more time with him in this last week, just him and I, uh, that we don't normally get to spend, you know, when you don't have the chaos of just distractions. distractions of life, you know, you just kind of get to get out there. And even though we're not doing a lot of talking uh, in the deer stand, you know, we do get to talk going to the stand and then, you know, back home. But that's probably my biggest, that's probably, that would be my biggest reason, you know, to take your child hunting is to get to, uh, get to spend some quality time with them, uh, just one-on-one. -on -one. And then, of course, you get, you know, killing deer and, and all the other stuff. It's just, that's just icing on the cake. But that's not the real reason for me. Well, I appreciate it. I think that's a great look at it. Um, quality time with the people we love in the outdoors doesn't get better. I agree with it. All right. Well, hey, the Legacy Hunters family, I want to thank you guys for joining. Um, thanks for telling your stories. And um, thanks for being part of the Midwest Outdoors podcast. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having us. Appreciate you. Everyone, stay tuned. We're going to throw it to a quick commercial break, but we're going to be right back here to wrap up this week's episode. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com. Welcome back, everyone. And yeah, that was great to be embraced with the culture of hunting. Like I said, I didn't grow up hunting. Um, I just really am learning about it now. I'm still very new to it. But it's, it's so great to be out in the woods, out in the stand, the field, just enjoying nature. And that's really one of my absolute favorite parts of fishing and the outdoors in general is just taking in what God's made and um, the beauty of the wilderness. It really is something else. So maybe this is the year. You know, it's it's starting to get a little late, but there's still plenty of time, um, especially if you want to do it a little more bare bones, you know, without all the gear. There's so much to help you now in hunting. The It's like fishing, you know, the technology almost seems endless. For sure, check out to make sure that you're on private or public land. Make sure you're not going over any fences or boundaries you're not supposed to be if you're new to hunting. Uh, that is something very important. Make sure you go over all your rules and regulations for your state. If you're out of state, double check them because they very well could be different than your home state rules and regs. Before we leave though this week, I wanted to talk about something real quick. Smoke and teas. Now, for the last few years, I've been given seminars up at the Milwaukee Fishing Show, and there was always a gentleman that had this tomato-looking concoction, and uh, I walked by it a few times, and one time he said, hey, you, you got to try this. It's good marketing. Because the second I ate that thing, I said, this is one of the best sauces I have ever had in my life, and um, Smoke and Tea sent us a couple, and I can't wait to crack this open. In fact, I think it's about time to end this podcast because I'm hungry for lunch. But if you guys want um, 
a sauce that has tons of flavor, but less sugar, less salt than the normal stuff, a lot of natural ingredients, this is one for you. Speaking of something delicious though, because you, the viewers, said you guys loved the cooking segments so much, we're gonna bring a whole lot of those back next season, and I can't wait to see all the things we cook up because there's going to be some tasty and unique dishes on the table. Well, everyone, that's all I got for you this week. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't, check out the Midwest Outdoors magazine. It's a great read. It's a great wealth of knowledge right there to learn anything from fishing, camping, hunting, and everything else. Check out those fish daddy baits as we are getting closer and closer each week to ice fishing now. In fact, I saw a freeze alert last night, so things are changing, so be patient, everyone. As always, I'm Jim O'Neill, and hey, thanks for joining us at the Midwest Outdoors podcast. Until next time, I'll see you on the water. Tight lines. <laughs>